head of the department of physical care <coughs> in SLG hospital hyderabad now he is going to talk on uh, acid based uh, uh, disorders uh, which is, is not actually abg analysis and uh, the seven steps all this is the what is the acid based status of the better understanding uh, body total body fluids and acids and uh, bases yeah Th thank you dr david uh, am i audible clearly yes yes uh, yeah thank you and uh, thank you david and uh, good morning to all and today i am going to discuss on uh, basically on acid base uh, disorders as dr uh, david had specifically instructed me not to go into um, abg analysis so i thought i will maybe minimal interaction may be there but usually we see both metabolic acidosis and alkalosis which are the most common things in the icu which we need to interpret very casually very cautiously so that the patient outcomes will be better so we we'll discuss on uh, metabolic acidosis first these are all uh, is a, like a refresher course for everyone because everyone knows about this topic metabolic acidosis is characterized by a primary reduction in the serum concentration of bicarbonate which leads to reduction in the blood ph okay. metabolic acidosis can be acute or chronic so the which lasts from minutes to several days in acute and chronic is lasting weeks to years in duration so usually in a patient with a sepsis uh usually it, uh, an early part of the sepsis to severe sepsis it varies from minutes to several days and uh, chronic uh, like specifically ckd or uh, cardiac diseases these patients have uh, weeks to years in duration so usually acute metabolic acidosis is approximately 60 to 70% of the patients what happens when there is a metabolic acidosis in the body generating there are buffers which will be activated so is a substance buffer is a substance that can either absorb or donate a proton to the solution so it can absorb or donate a proton so this keeps the concentration of the h plus ions it is very low that is in a normal level there is approximately around 7.4 ph of 40 milli equivalents so this is the balance it does the body does in the um yeah. so there is buffers with extra cellular extra cellular is bicarbonate intracellular is proteins phosphates and hemoglobin and the bone so these are the buffers in the patient so we give basically extra cellular that is bicarbonate but uh, then uh, not required to give intracellular it is difficult to measure intracellular proteins phosphates and also hemoglobin in these patients next slide anna next slide yeah so the the this uh, you all know that henderson hasselbeck uh, equation h plus so what happens actually is when there is a problem in the kidney lung become activated when the problem in the lung then there is a kidney is activated to compensate it lung acts very faster within minutes but the kidney it takes time but it starts acting but for the compensation it takes some time so henderson hasselbeck equation h plus is equal to 24 into pco2 by bicarbonate so usually if you see into this equation is a 7.4 ph is a 40 milli equivalents of h plus ions per liter is a constant value and the body tries to donate h plus or takes of h plus from that uh, and uh, maintain the ph of 7.4 and pco2 of uh, h plus ions of 40 next slide so simple today we will decree we will see the metabolic acidosis and alkalosis we all know primary decrease in the bicarbonate is acidosis metabolic increase in the bicarbonate is a metabolic alkalosis next slide please yeah so as we discussed it is regulated by the kidney bicarbonate 
and uh, so which there is regulation of acid base by the kidneys which is leading to the metabolic acidosis and alkalosis next slide please normal value of uh, bicarbonate 24 to 26 millimoles per liter metabolic acidosis acute or chronic can have considerable adverse effects on cellular function and contribute to increase mortality and morbidity so any amount of metabolic acidosis whether a mild moderate or severe which has an effect on the cellular function and can contribute to increase mortality and morbidity next slide please so this is for a normal abg here if you see a ph of 7.38 or 7.4 with a pco2 of 40 and bicarbonate 24 this is a normal abg metabolic acidosis ph is 7.3 pco2 of 40 so pco2 40 we take as a standard in the evaluation of an arterial blood gas analysis and bicarbonate of 18 here this ph and bicarbonate is both in the same direction so we take it as a metabolic acidosis the ph is down because of the loss of bicarbonate next slide please metabolic acidosis so it is because of the increase in the production of non volatile acids or loss of bicarbonate from the body either increase acids or loss of bicarbonate the average net acid production is 1 millimole per kg per day and the renal tubules must quantitatively reabsorb the filtered bicarbonate and synthesize sufficient bicarbonate to neutralize the endogenous acid so basically acid production is constant so for that the our body the kidney has to reabsorb or synthesize the bicarbonate to neutralize the acid otherwise our body will be acidotic most of the times metabolic acidosis occurs only if acid base hemostasis or when renal mechanisms are compromised next slide please next slide sir so uh, the primary response to metabolic acidosis is so what happens we know respiratory alkalosis that means increase in the ventilation so we have to excrete the carbon dioxide to maintain a normal ph so formula representing the buffering system is h plus plus by is equal to by carb is equal to h2co3 is equals to co2 plus h2o so excess of h plus can be excreted by conversion to co2 at proximal distributes tubules the hypokinesia hypocapnia is beneficial and improves the blood ph as we discussed next slide please so here we look into the expected carbon dioxide as we are mentioning that the expected carbon dioxide at when we uh there is a metabolic acidosis because so expected carbon dioxide is equal to 1.5 into bicarbonate plus 8 plus or minus 2 so complete adaptive uh, secondary adaptive response within 12 to 24 hours there is a superimposed respiratory acidosis or alkalosis can be diagnosed next slide please so here if you see into this uh, normal compensation 7.34 and uh, this is a metabolic acidosis the 35 is the pco2 bicarbonate is 18 so if it is a bicarbonate is 18 here from the, i have put a formula expected pco2 is equal to as per the formula it is 33 to 37 so here the pco2 is average is around 35 but pco it is 35 in this uh, one as a pco2 is 33 to 37 is expected with for a bicarb 18 so this is a normal compensation here what happens here expected pco2 is 35 in this it is 40 that means 5 instead of 35 it is has come as to a uh, 40 that means there is a respiratory acidosis component here and here instead of 35 the pco2 is decreased to 30 that means there is a respiratory alkalosis in this component next slide please so i don't know how much of you how many of you can see this slide is a uh, but i'll i'll go through this slide what are the effects of metabolic acidosis what happens see you visually we when there is a 
patient who is having a hypotension and patient is having a metabolic acidosis why do this patient have a hypotension because there is a arterial vasodilatation due to metabolic acidosis which leads to hypotension and also it also has a high chance of ventricular arrhythmias and also acidosis causes impaired leukocyte function and when you are giving noradrenaline or adrenaline or uh, whichever is even you do a dobutamine there is a resistance to action of infused catecholamines and vasopressors and vasodilators so and also in the, usually we see hyperglycemia resistance to the action of insulin and suppression of the lymphocyte function and impaired cellular energy production so stimulation of apoptosis and we see the changes in the mental state and stimulation of interleukin production alteration in hemoglobin binding to hemoglobin alteration in oxygen binding to hemoglobin venoconstriction and decrease contract contractility and cardiac output and impaired leukocyte function if you see there is a metabolic acidosis and patient is having hypotension if you give soda bicarbonate to this patient immediately you see a certain uh, for some time there is a uh, patient will have a, a increased blood pressure so you should have witnessed many times but that won't be persistent because the production of acids are very high when compared in the neutralization of bases in the body and the, the metabolic acidosis cause has to be treated than just supplementing the uh bicarbonate to the patients so these are all the uh, dysfunction effects of metabolic acidosis in a patient so when we have a metabolic acidosis we need to look into anion gap so the calculation of anion gap is useful so there are lot of what in the body as we are mentioning that unmeasured cations and unmeasured anions neutralize each other to maintain the body hemostasis so what happens when there is a so what are the unmeasured cations these are sodium potassium calcium magnesium and hydrogen ions and unmeasured anions chloride bicarbonate oh minus albumin phosphate sulfate lactate so these are the unmeasured ions so when we are looking into the anion gap we are not going to calculate all these things and look into the value of the anion gap because anion gap has to be calculated and it has we have to see the trend of the anion gap in a patient than daily once or every alternate day once so that doing this much investigations is difficult to do burden to the patient and evaluation also is difficult next slide so most plasma ions are normally present at relatively low concentration and that variations are very small so as i mentioned these ions uh, very small routine measurements of all ions in the plasma is not required so three ions with the highest plasma concentration and the largest variations are used to calculate those are sodium chloride and bicarbonate so how do we calculate this next slide sir ah uh, yeah at uh, this slide how do we calculate this serum anion gap is defined as sodium minus chloride okay plus uh, bicarbonate so you calculate here i have calculated it anion gap can be normal or high a normal range for a serum anion gap is relatively wide so it is 8 to 12 so anion gap here it is there is a metabolic acidosis okay in a pa this patient has a metabolic acidosis anion gap is 125 sodium minus 100 chloride plus bicarbonate so it is 7 7 is a normal but there is a metabolic acidosis in this patient next slide please so in the anion gap of if you take this equation anion gap 125 sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate is equal to 9 which is 8 to 12 but the albumin influences a lot on the anion gap so what we need to do is we need to go for the corrected anion gap when corrected anion gap equals to 9 9 is the anion gap we got plus 2.5 into 4.5 minus this so this is a constant 
uh, 4.5. Why? Because uh, they take albumin as 4.5 as a normal value in the body. So minus albumin. If it is 4.5, then it is will be nullified. So it will be zero. So that's the, then the anion gap, corrected anion gap will be nine. So here, this, as is the uh, albumin is two, it comes around nine plus 2.5 into 4.5 minus two is equal to 2.5, which comes to uh, nine plus 6.25, it comes to around 15.25, which is high. Even though this anion gap looks normal, um, the here, the when you calculate for the anion gap for the albumin, it is higher. Next slide, please. So when there is a high anion gap, okay, then we need to think into these things. So immediately a patient comes to you with a metabolic acidosis, you calculate the anion gap. If it's anion gap is high, then immediately think of, which can be a methanol toxicity, uremic toxicity, we have seen methanol toxicity, uremic toxicity, DKA or alcohol, and a paraldehyde, INH, lactic acidosis, ethylene glycol, rhabdomyolysis and, and salicylate. So these are the things quickly it should run in your mind when there is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Next slide. Okay. So high anion gap metabolic acidosis can be because of the overproduction of the acid. So overproduction of the acid, we know that diabetic ketoacidosis, DKA, alcoholic ketoacidosis and starvation. So we see is uh, sometimes the patient is having severe metabolic acidosis and uh, the sugars were normal and this patient might be having the starvation. So until you uh, give a dextrose, uh, you, know, you the acidosis will not be coming down. And we have seen that whatever most, uh, some, sometimes we get a consultation and uh, we see these patients, they will be giving continuously bicarbonate infusions also in this patient. So patient bicarbonate will not, the acidosis will not resolve. So acidosis will not be resolved unless you identify the underlying cause and treat. The bicarbonate is not the solution. So lactic acidosis. So lactic acidosis, it can be because of uh, type A, it's a hypoxia. That is because of the septic shock, mesenteric ischemia, hypoxemia, hypovolemic shock, carbon monoxide poisoning, and cyanose and cyanide. Type B is non-hypoxemic, that is thiamine deficiency, seizure, medications, and like um, uh, ARTs, metformin, propofol, niacin, isoniazid, iron, intoxication is salicylate, ethylene glycol, propylene glycol, methanol, proline ingestion, and paraldehyde. D lactic acidosis in the short bowel syndrome, which is a D, it stands for dangerous. So it's also, we cannot measure the D lactate in our regular routine ABG machines. So we measure only a L lactate in our body. So under excretion of acid, especially in the advanced renal failure, here the production might be normal uh, acids, but the renal failure is there. So these are one of the chronic type of renal failure where uh, the excretion of acids is a problem. Impaired lactic clearance in the liver failure, this also contributes to anion gap. And cell lysis, massive rhabdomyolysis, use of insulin-derived antibiotics and pyroglutamate acid. So these are the things which can cause a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. Then the normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Chloride plays a central role in intracellular and extracellular acid-base regulation. A normal anion gap metabolic acidosis occurs when the decrease in the bicarbonate ions correspond with an increase in the chloride ions to retain electron neutrality, which is called hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. See here. Here, the sodium is like normal value is 135, but it is here it is 130 minus chloride usually, even the bicarbonate is decreased 10. But this is compensating this chloride. Bicarbonate is compensated by chloride. Here, the normal chloride level should be 100, but it is increased to 12. So the anion gap 8 is equal to 130 minus 122 is equal to 8. Anion gap is normal. But there is a metabolic acidosis and this is a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Next slide. So which is because of the, which can be because of hyperalimentation, 
Astrozolomai, renal tubular acidosis, diarrhea, urethral and post hypercapnia and spinal atom. So these are the things you need to keep in your mind when you find a normal anemia metabolic acidosis. Next slide, please. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, so urine anion gap is used to evaluate normal anion gap acidosis. Okay. So helps diagnose metabolic acidosis due to renal excretory failure. So what we do, urinary sodium we have to calculate plus urine potassium and also you have to calculate the urine chloride. So when there is a metabolic acidosis and evaluate normal anion gap metabolic acidosis is there, you have to send a urine electrolytes, urine sodium, potassium and chloride because you need to know whether kidney is the cause of metabolic acidosis or normal anion gap or extra renal causes are the metabolic acidosis with a no, uh, the normal anion gap. So here what happens? Just a simple logic. You use this logic in this. Urine sodium and urine potassium minus urine chloride is equal to urine anion gap. When the kidney is normal, it conserves sodium and potassium. Okay, so then automatically, when it conserves the sodium and potassium, the uh, and loss of chloride, it will be positive. So when it is positive, you can think kidney is not the cause. This is an extra kidney is the cause. When it is kidney is not functioning well, so urine sodium and urine potassium will be high because kidney doesn't have a capacity to retain it. When you are losing the, the sodium and potassium. Then the renal cause is the cause of the uh, uh, metabolic acidosis. Next slide. So there are a lot of things. Right? Delta gap is it? And it is very difficult to memorize it. You can, uh, uh, but for the exam going students, there is no option. But uh, as a consultants, and uh, we can put in a slip of paper, and we can always calculate. Uh, but the background concept has to be there. I'll just go through the concept. What is delta gap? In high, high anion gap metabolic acidosis, the magnitude of increase in the anion gap is related to the decrease in the bicarbonate ions. So delta. So what he is saying is, if there is a delta anion gap, suppose if it is normal is uh, twelve, if you take there is a decrease in the. Can you why is mentioned about the senior question? Sir, why, sir? Clearly, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, in high anion gap metabolic acidosis, the magnitude of increase in the anion gap. So, if the suppose the anion gap is increased by 3, so anion gap is increased from 12 to 15, I'm going to. So, it is there is an increase in the 3. So, there should be a relative decrease in the bicarbonate ions. So the bicarbonate ions has to be decreased from 24 to 21. So this is a concept. So if there is an increase in the, so to diagnose a high anion gap acidosis, the concomitant metabolic alkalosis or normal anion gap acidosis, the so-called delta gap may be used. So we need to check whether what component is there. Next slide, sir. Yeah, here, Delta gap is used to diagnose mixed metabolic acidosis based disorders. So here delta gap, AG, anion gap, delta anion gap here equals to observed anion gap minus upper limit of the normal anion gap, 12. So observed anion gap if you take as a 15. So delta anion gap is 3 here. Just I am taking an example, 3. And here delta bicarbonate, if you say, that means normal bicarbonate 24 minus observed bicarbonate. So observed bicarbonate is 21. Then the delta bicarbonate is 3. In DKA, usually what happens is observed the delta AG and delta bicarbonates will be usually in the ratio of 1. That means in ketoacidosis, there is a 1 is to 1 correlation between the increase in the anion gap and decrease in the concentration of the bicarbonate. You take this example, previous slide. Yeah. No, no, no. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah. 
so in this in this what happened is the observed anion gap is delta anion gap is 3 delta bicarbonate gap is 3 so here the uh, equals to delta anion gap is equals to the delta bicarbonate gap next slide so in keto acidosis there is a 1 is to 1 correlation between the increase in the anion gap and the decrease in the concentration of the bicarbonate so in lactic acidosis what happens the decrease in the concentration of bicarbonate is 0.6 times the increase in the anion gap if a anion gap increases by 10 times the concentration of bicarbonate should decrease by 6 times that means actually it has to decrease by 10 times this also because when anion gap increases by 10 times the gap of bicarbonate also has to increase by the 10 times but in lactic acidosis there may be only a six decrease this difference is probably due to lower renal clearance of lactate as compared with the keto ions so when there is a so th that's reason in the patients who is having a high lactate they may not express much uh bicarbonate decrease in this patients next slide so delta to delta gap so all these ratios like what he is looking at is one is he has seen the ratio previously now and now delta to delta gap that is delta gap this is delta to delta gap so what the same same formula he is applying but he is applying this subtracting it so anion gap so calculate delta gap is equal to delta anion gap minus delta bicarbonate gap delta anion gap anion gap minus 12 or 24 minus bicarbonate so this is delta anion gap this is delta bi gap if the anion if the delta gap is more than 6 okay so that means what happens here here if you see into this delta anion gap is he has put a equation that uh ag minus 12 okay minus 24 minus bica is equal to 22 minus 12 so he has put a anion gap of 22 okay minus 12 minus 24 minus 22 here bicarbonate is normal here also the bicarbonate has to decrease here anion gap has increased by 22 means it is increased by 10 here the bicarbonate has to be 14 but here it is 22 so that's the reason why so 22 means what there is an associated bicarbonate uh, that is metabolic alkalosis is present in this so if 10 minus 2 is 8 that means a delta gap of more than 6 is there is a associated combined anion gap metabolic acidosis and metabolic alkalosis is component is also is there because if you see here in this equation i am again repeating it anion gap is 22 minus 12 that means anion gap is 10 here bicarbonate has to decrease by 10 but it is still 22 that means there is this has increased by only 2 it has to decrease by 10 by uh, uh, 12 but it has Uh, decrease by only two that is there is a metabolic alkalosis component in the similar way the gap is less than 6 anion gap minus 12 is equal to 22 minus 22 that means anion gap increases 10 minus 12 uh, uh, 10 minus 12 minus 22 minus 8 is equal to 10 minus 6 is equal to 4 that is there is a anion gap metabolic acidosis non anion gap metabolic acidosis is existing in this patient so that's how we calculate delta to delta gap so delta to del uh, check gap by gap ratio so gap by gap ratio also is a similar calculation so anion gap delta anion gap minus by delta uh, bicarbonate more than 2 is high anion gap metabolic acidosis and concurrent metabolic alkalosis so here if it is 22 that means here the increase in the anion gap is 10 but here the decrease in the uh, bicarbonate is only 2 22 so that means 10 by 2 is equal to 5 that is 
says that is there is a concurrent metabolic alkalosis. So Ag by this ratio is less than one. Normal anion get metabolic acidosis. So here it is 18 minus there is increase is six minus 12. Okay. Here the decrease is 24 minus uh, it is 17. 17 24 minus 17 is uh, uh, 7. So that means here the anion gap is increased by 6. Bicarbonate is decreased by 7. So 6 by 7 is equal to 0 0.85. So there Jepandi is a normal anion. Sir. Sir Jepandi. Hello? 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 Sir, Bagan any question, Marco? Carry on. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Nali, nali inki sari Thank you. So there is a normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. So these are all the formulas, whether he is a delta ratio. Uh, so this, to look into the other component also is there in the, along with the metabolic acidosis, we need to look into it. So next slide, sir. Sir, next slide. Ah, osmolar gap, osmolar gap. Previous slide, sir. Ah, yes, 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 same slide. Thank you. So we know that uh, how to calculate the serum osmolarity. So 2 into sodium plus 1 by 2.8 plus glucose by 18. So it's normally is around 275 to 295. So we need to check a serum osmolar gap is equal to measured serum osmolarity minus calculated serum osmolarity. The difference between calculated and measured osmolarity is approximately 0 to 10. If it is more than 10, then we need to suspect ethanol, methanol, ethylene. Hello? Hello, Vinupartuna? Madhila, cutting it and pitch you, you put in Ah, okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir. So, Malijapu. Huh? Asmular gap, Malijapu. Ah, sir. Asmular gap is, as we know that, uh, formula is 2 into sodium plus 1 by 2.8 plus glucose by 18. So, it is normally is 275 to 295. So normal osmolar gap is 0 to 10. If it is more than 10, then we need to suspect ethanol, methanol, ethylene glycol or propylene glycol toxicity. So when there is a, having a metabolic acidosis, we need to calculate this osmolar gap to suspect uh, what type of toxicity is this patient. Next slide, please. Sir, next slide. Sir, David, sir, me kina Yeah. So the same thing. The if there is a metabolic acidosis, the secondary res respiratory response, anion gap. Next slide. So the, we check into the urinary anion gap and then delta gap. So this we need to identify it. Um, and uh, then we check the osmolar gap. Next slide, please. So, so uses and limitations of anion gap. Lactic acidosis accounts for about half the cases of high anion gap and is often due to shock or tissue hypoxia. Patient can have elevated lactate levels with no metabolic acidosis. Please, we see you know, routinely these type of patients but we need to look, have a very caution on this. Patients can have elevated lactate levels with no metabolic acidosis. Patient can have normal lactate levels with metabolic acidosis. When lactate levels are not measured, a high anion gap can alert the physician for the further evaluation. Next slide, please. So anion gap to be adjusted to the albumin. Anion gap can help to establish the diagnosis of DKA. Anion gap can be used to track the resolution of ketosis. Next slide, please. The anion gap uh, can also aid in the diagnosis of D-lactic acidosis in patients with short bowel syndrome because the standard 
lactate levels remains normal while you have an anion jack increase so there will be an when d lactate as i mentioned that d lactates cannot be measured but the l lactate whatever we measure is be normal but there is a severe metabolic acidosis so as you know that so this we can look into the bowel ischemia uh, type of diseases where the lactate is normal and then uh, anion gap is uh, increasing and metabolic acidosis is increasing we can think of a bowel ischemia low or negative anion gap is observed when hyperchloremia is caused by high levels of cations as seen in lithium toxicity and monoclonal igg gamma uh, gamma pathi this is a basically idc sam mcq question should be very cautious in this lithium toxicity or this next slide please treat the cause there is no treatment for metabolic acidosis treat the cause as we discuss acute kidney injury dka lactic acidosis toxic alcohol intoxication fasting uh, ketoacidosis cardiac failure shock blood loss diarrhea intestinal pancreatic or bile fistulas ureter sigma dystonia next slide sir so role of soda bicarbonate there is no role of soda bicarbonate unless the ph is less than 7.5 15 and there is a, a severe metabolic acidosis and uh, the patient is having hemodynamically unstable you don't give a bicarbonate to the patient with a metabolic acidosis identify the cause and treat the cause that is more important if you start giving soda bicarbonate you identify more of fluid overload hypernatremia hypercapnia and metabolic alkalosis these are the problems you face when you give a high metabolic um, uh, this one bicarbonate so scenario 1 so these are all from the articles i have taken some few scenarios quickly i will run through this scenario a 22 year old woman who had been injured in an accident received 6 liters of isotonic saline after which the level of sodium was 135 potassium 3.8 chloride 115 bicarbonate 18 rtl pa 7.28 pco2 was 39 and albumin is 4.5 the urinary sodium level was 65 and potassium 15 and chloride is 110 next slide please so ph is 7.28 acidosis bicarbonate is low 18 expected pco2 is uh, around uh, 35 plus or minus 2 but uh, pco2 here is calculate is 39 so mild respiratory acidosis and metabolic acidosis and and gap is 135 minus uh, 115 uh, is a chloride plus 18 is equal to 2 and and gap is 2 and here even uh, albumin is normal 4.5 urinary and and gap is around 30 urine here the sodium and uh, potassium is low we are losing more chloride that means suggested that kidneys uh, uh, other than kidneys is a cause so metabolic alkalosis so now we completed metabolic acidosis i'll quickly in 10 minutes i'll complete the metabolic alkalosis metabolic alkalosis is defined as a disease state where the body's ph is elevated to greater than 7.45 secondary to some metabolic processes so h uh, as we have already seen the equation so hco3 functions as an alkalotic substance co2 functions as an acidic substance increase in bicarbonate or decrease in carbon dioxide will make blood more alkalotic metabolic alkalosis is an increase in serum bicarbonate levels how will we uh, narrow down the causes is intracellular shift of hydrogen ions gastrointestinal loss of hydrogen ions excessive renal hydrogen ions loss uh, 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 retention or uh, addition of bicarbonate ions volume contraction around the constant amount of extracellular bicarbonate causes a contraction alkalosis if the renal function is maintained excess bicarbonate is created in the urine rapidly so basically see in a patient who is we see whether a metabolic acidosis or alkalosis depending on the body cellular function is reflected directly without the uh, renal adjustment in a patient the sepsis before the renal uh, we see high creatinine sepsis or another causes when there is a renal dysfunction we see a real, real picture of the body uh, otherwise the kidney tries to function well and normal functioning it tries to conserve bicarbonate or excrete bicarbonate or conserve h plus ions or excrete h plus ions and maintain the normal ph so metabolic alkalosis will preserve if the ability to eliminate bicarbonate is impaired due to one of the following causes hypovolemia 
reduced effective arterial blood volume and the chloride depletion hypokalemia reduced gfr or hyperallergenia next slide please so metabolic alkalosis is split into two main categories which is a chloride resistant or chloride responsive chloride responsive with a urine chloride less than 10 milli equivalents so you have to whenever you see a metabolic alkalosis immediately you have to send for a urine chloride levels so check whether it is less than 10 or more than 20 so this chloride responsive is if the urine chloride is less than 10 so it always include what happens loss of hydrogen uh, that is um chloride responsive is a loss of hydrogen that is via gastrointestinal tract so when why it is less than 10 means because when there is a hcl loss is there then kidney tries to conserve the uh, chloride and you see that in the urine chloride there is a less of chloride so etiology is include loss of uh, hydrogen via gastrointestinal tract contraction alkalosis diuretic therapy for we see most of the cardiac patients who is on diuresis therapy go into metabolic alkalosis post hypercapnia syndrome cystic fibrosis and alkalosis exogenous alkalotic agent use and also contraction the well is a volume contraction there can be acidosis or alkalosis both can be a possibility chloride resistant etiologies include retention of bicarbonate the shift of hydrogen ions into intracellular spaces hyperallergenia barter syndrome and gitelman syndrome so here you see a more of uh, chloride losing the chloride next slide please so the same thing is mentioned here chloride responsive means uh, urine chloride less than 15 and you see the conditions like vomiting nasogastric suction uh, chloritic diuresis volume depletion laxative abuse here chloride resistant you see primary aldosterone only uh, alkalize ingestion and severe hypokaliemia next slide please so what are the major adverse of effects of severe uh, alkalemia usually when there is a metabolic alkalosis we just uh, uh, try to ignore most of the times most of the times we uh, look more into the acidosis is there or not but actually we need to look into the when the patient is having alkalosis also we need to evaluate it because it also has a impact on the system like arterial vasoconstriction cardiovascular reduced coronary blood flow reduced angina threshold predisposition to refractory arrhythmias hypoventilation with hypercapnia and hypoxemia metabolic like stimulation of anaerobic glycolysis organ acid production hypokalemia decreased plasma ionized calcium concentration hypomagnesemia and hypophosphatemia cerebral reduced in reduction in cerebral blood flow tetany seizures lethargy delirium and stupor next slide please so treatment of chloride resistant metabolic alkalosis is focused on treating the underlying condition that triggered the alkalotic event okay so many of these pathologies are due to renin angiotensin aldosterone system so treat uh, treatment includes inhibiting of the effect of aldosterone on the nephron using potassium sparing diuretic in chloride responsive metabolic alkalosis this includes repletion of electrolytes specifically chloride and potassium along with the replenishment of fluid in congestive heart failure a ready made stage diuresis is essential use in potassium sparing diuretic so how do we estimate the chloride deficiency next slide please sir next slide yeah so chloride deficit equals to 0.2 into patient weight into 100 minus plasma so that determines the uh, value 0.2 into weight is suppose 80 into 100 minus the plasma chloride so determine the plasma volume replacement is by the through the normal saline 0.9 the chloride re replacement so whatever is the chloride minus deficit by 100 so replacement around 100 ml per hour so we will see next slide please yeah sorry sorry just pre previous slide so what happens is here 0.2 into 80 okay uh, is uh, 1.6 into 100 minus suppose if it is uh, chloride is 70 100 uh, 1.6 into 30 it is around 4.8 uh, 
so the um, uh, chloride uh, deficit is we require this 100 uh, minus uh, 4.8 um, uh, divided by um, 154 so we get approximately around 3 or uh, uh, 1.5 or uh, 2 liters of sodium chloride in this patient so i'll i'll just post a calculation okay uh, in our group is about the uh, volume replacement of saline the next slide please this is a case uh, scenario one case scenario will go is more relevant second this is published in the our iscm journal so I thought it is more uh, uh, is published from some I think uh, uh, hospital into the IR, ISCCM journal. So I thought it is more relevant for us. Two cases we can go through two cases also. A 60 year old man presented to emergency department with complaints of weakness, difficulty in breathing, decreased appetite, and absolute constipation for 10 days. He was Restless and disoriented. Hemodynamic parameters were normal. Investigations and systemic examination revealed severe metabolic alkalosis, pH of 7.66, with dyselectrolemia and volume depletion. His respiratory and neurological systems were unremarkable. The abdomen was distended and multiple fluids and air levels seen on the abdomen radiograph. Confirmed subacute intestinal obstruction. Despite denials of use of any diuretics or laxatives, when his regular medication was checked, the loop diuretics and combination with the potassium sparing diuretics were recovered, confirming long term diuretic abuse. Next slide, please. Yeah, yeah, thank you. All diuretics were removed from patient's bedside, and patient was hydrated to achieve a CVP of 10 uh, and urine output of more than 1 ml per kg per hour. So constipation was relieved by manual evacuation, the cause of subacute intestinal obstruction. Supplementation of potassium, chloride, sodium, and magnesium led to improvement of the serum electrolytes and resolution of alkalemia over 36 hours. The patient's respiratory distress, weakness, and lassitude resolved. Patient was discharged after four days without any complaints. Next slide, please. Case two. Um, so this, this is again a 50-year-old man with a past history of uh, hypertension and chronic renal failure was admitted to our hospital. Our means their hospital in somewhere in Delhi. Uh, complaining of high-grade fever, vomiting and diarrhea for a past week. On examination, he was lethargic with slow eye, photomotor reflexes, confused on arousal, with poor coordinated movements and speech. He appeared malnourished, dehydrated and oligary. The relevant lab investigations and clinical picture reflected severe chloride potassium fluid deficiency, depletion with metabolic alkalosis, pH of 7.69. Compensatory hypoventilation, hypercapnia, hypoxemia, and acute and chronic renal failure. CT of a brain was normal. Under careful monitoring, replacement of normal flea fluid, potassium, and sodium chloride was started. Milk based internal nutrition along with supplementation of magnesium, phosphate, vitamins, and trace elements were started. UTI of E. coli growth in urine was treated with antibiotics according to CVR reports in spite of improvement in the presenting complaints of fever. So he basically high-grade fever, vomiting, diarrhea. We all know that once this patient uh, is admitted with uh, these complaints, so this is a chloride responsive uh, metabolic alkalosis so vomit next slide next slide please so uh, in spite of improvement in presenting complaints of fever vomitings and diarrhea his renal function deteriorated progressively over the next two days urea 90 and creatinine 5.2 extreme alkalemia persisted uh, and because the kidney is not able to handle anything um, as uh, the patient also has a renal failure Oral acetazolamide 250 mg per day was started and uh, frequency of the proton pump blocker was increased to twice a day. Hemodialysis with dialysate of containing 25 to 28 milliequivalents of bicarbonate was tried twice. Low bicarbonate contained dialysis was dialysate was unavailable. Intravenous calcium gluconate followed by 1500 mg calcium 
carbonate per day was administered for hypocalcemia. On the fourth day, he developed further deterioration in the level of consciousness and developed myoclonic jerks, titania, and seizures. CT revealed an acute subdural hemorrhage in the right parietal region. Procurement of medical grade hypochloric acid was attempted. However, patient was shifted to a government hospital due to financial constraint where he expired after two days. I don't know this uh, medical grade hydrochloric acid and not attempted at any time uh, uh, for a metabolic alkalosis. And thank you. I welcome any questions. Thanks, Anna. Very nice presentation <coughs> explaining both the acidosis and the alkalosis the case scenarios. Any questions? Metabolic alkalosis is a the uh, so the patient will become uh, a nasogastric suction, uh, continuous rise to drainage, or when there is a hypovolemia condition. So, this is definite. And um, uh, that is a chloride responsive. Resistant antenna, uh, primary aldosteronism or uh, severe hypokalemia, these patients we see it. And... Um, uh, patients, uh, most of the times what happens in a patient usually will have a metabolic acidosis and we give uh, a lot of fluid to these patients. So, when we are uh, pneumonia, ARDS, when we start uh, having a more cumulative balance and when we have a, a more of cumulative balance and uh, we try to optimize the fluid balance, we start on diuretics. And uh, when the lung function is uh, going down, we start on a uh, diuretics. At this time, we see the metabolic uh, alkalosis. So we need to have a close watch on the pH at that time um, because uh, this uh, is also has uh, associated with uh, other issues. Sir. Now, yesterday, one uh, VIP patient came, MLA, hmm. uh, with complaining of mild breathlessness, diabetic hypertensive post CABG. Hmm. And uh, we had some bees, so managed with uh, nebulizations. Mm. I, he got some relief, but uh, had some weakness. He was complaining of severe weakness. Mm. And the uh, ABG shows pH is around 7.5. Mm. Mm. And uh, PCO2 is okay, 34, 35, something. I didn't see that. Mm. And uh, bicarbonate is 32. Mm. So, that person called me, that pulmonologist, and uh, he asked me what are the causes of this uh, metabolic alkaloids and severe weakness. Mm. Can you explain this? Mm, yes, sir. This is basically metabolic uh, alkalosis in this patient. Potassium uh, the, David? Potassium around 3.5. The normal alkalosis is like that. Hmm. Hypokalemia low absorption oh. soda of peripai alkalosis of the other. On sir. On sir. Sir, he patient too, he came with breathlessness. So, so post C A B G patient and day, mostly in a diuretics me unnunted, sir. Okay. Is he on diuretics? Yeah. Huh? He said might be on diuretics. Uh, he might be on diuretics, definitely. Uh -huh. One. Second thing in a day, is he a uh, acute exacerbation of COPD patient? Oh, actually, is a uh, patient is a OSA on uh, CPAP. Uh, no hyperventilation or no hypercapnia. Uh, uh, here, actually, what happened in this patient? There might be a bicarb diuretic component is there, and his bicarbonate is 32. That means Either this is a chronic problem for him. So, in chronic problem, what happened? Because 
his actually his pco2 has to be set high 50 work undochu e 32 lo uh, pco2 but because of his breathlessness his pco2 is low around 34 or 35 that is low for him and uh, the, the uh, because the respiratory compensation happens early and the bicarbonate compensation takes time so that's the reason why bicarbonate is high in this patient and respiratory alkalo respiratory alkalosis is there in this patient so hyperventilation is present in this patient means breathless shortness of breath that's the reason why the ph is deranged sir so two one is because of the respiratory failure respiratory distress and because of the diuretics this patient had a uh, so you can evaluate doing a um, there's no need to do actually this um, but to uh, a primary aldosteronism to rule out, you can do a urine chloride in this patient. Yeah. So, what is the final, sir? Call, final, call uh, actually, not evaluated. I told them to come today. I told the same thing that uh, you might be diuretic induced uh, uh, metabolic alkalosis. So, you just to take, bring the medication and check the, is the chloride level, chloride levels, and uh, all the electrolytes. So that we can evaluate the cause of uh, alkalosis. Mm. Then we can advise the treatment. Any questions? Sir, one uh, you told uh, all the calculations, no, that uh, gaps and uh, gap gaps and this ratio of gaps, all these things. Mm. But uh, to make very simple, Mm. Uh, we had one ventilator uh, workshop in uh, Medica or hospital, Dr. Prem Kumar uh, told one simple calculation mm. that sodium plus chloride minus 39, if it is more than 6, mm. that is ad additional metabolic alkalosis. If mm. it is less than 6, it is non-anionic gap metabolic acidosis. Mm -hmm. How he got 39, sir? 39 got to, uh, uh, through all these calculations. Mm. So, instead of doing all the calculations, chloride, uh, sodium plus chloride minus 39. Mm. So, this 39 got from all these calculations. Mm. Plus 6 metabolic, additional metabolic calculations, minus 6 uh, means less than 6. It is uh, additional uh, non-gap acidosis. Mm. Sir, the, yeah. even remembering these numbers is very difficult. Yeah, Actually, if you know the delta anion gap and delta bicarbonate, just we need to look into that ratio or when you do a minus or whatever you do, what is the change in the anion gap? What is the change in the bicarbonate? Delta bicarbonate. If you look into the two things, whether you minus it or whether you ratio it, then you will have an uh, uh, idea. E easily we can tell whether there is a associated metabolic acidosis or non-anion gap or alkalosis, whatever it is. Satish wants to tell. Anna? Satish. Yes. Good morning, sir. Uh, just three points of concern. First point is, Whenever there is a patient is in early sepsis, we expect that patient will be in the metabolic acidosis and elevated lactate is the standard procedure of looking into a sepsis. But sometimes we see patient lactate is elevated, but patient is not having acidosis. And that's a point where many people will get confused. Please highlight on this fun thing. Second thing is, sometimes what happens in DKA patients, because there is, uh, if you calculate the anion gap, seems to be normal. So normally the dectum is in anion, no matter, oh, sorry, diabetic ketosis is elevated uh, anion gap histose. So that is one point we need to uh, adjust the sodium to the existing sugar levels. Then only. Yeah. So question number two, uh, the point number two. In patient with DK, normally what we learned is it should be increased anion gap metabolic histosis. But in the practicality, there will be low sodium to the existing high sugars. So, shows spuriously normal anion gap and we mislead that it is not decay. Sinwas, sir. Yes, sir. sir. So this is 
one point to be highlighted point 3 uh in the existing previous case what david was telling so as long as the patient is not meddled with any ventilation or some diuretic whatever the formulas and whatever the rules apply to evaluate the acid base status works good when the patient is taken on to any instrument like niv ventilation diuretic all these things will have a mixed effect so we cannot pinpoint the actual diagnosis these are the three things i want to highlight agree sir so see usually that's the reason why when the patient uh, comes with a history of breathlessness or some acid base disturbances the first abg we need to look when the patient directly comes from the home to us is a emergency department abg if you check into that then we will know whether this patient is having an acute problem or a chronic problem because unless uh, we identify uh, that problem then treating in the icu is a difficult thing but as you mentioned this patient who is on bipap already treated with xyz at home therapies this can manipulate things yes sir yes sir point 2 sir we have to opt we have to correct the sodium before calculating the anion gap to the existing mm. shows sir comment sir uh it's from days and piece soon sir because the sugar for each uh, 100 increase in the blood sugar yes sir there is a change in the to 1.8 to 2 yeah 1.6 roughly ah uh. uh, uh, 1.6 so usually these dk patients having a um, uh, uh, they won't be having high sugars hhs will have a high sugars but uh, the, uh, the they don't have acidosis these patients have around 300 to 400 less than 500 but have a um, uh, metabolic acidosis so yes, at sir. that point of time so here two things sir here one is because of the uh so sodium can be uh, because of low intake and volume is low uh, yes, in sir. a dk later period it may become a normal same mm-hmm. anion gap may be carried because when you give infusion of sodium chloride sodium can be increased and at the same time chloride can be increased more than the sodium which can again yes. make the same uh, like anion gap yes sir so my point is if normal anion gap in the abg does not rule out a dka yes yes sir yes sir but so th- th- there we uh, come into this delta gaps no sir yes sir yes yes sir and sepsis lactate yes sir normally patient will be a metabolic acidosis patient now patient is in the early sepsis there is alkalosis because of the hyperventilation respiratory alkalosis is very common presentation in sepsis but lactate is high so what we think is the, the, uh, there is no direct relation that elevated lactate leading to acidosis lactate should become lactic acid then only acidosis will develop any comment on this मिसलीडिंग थिंग इवन दर इज एन एलिटेड still patient abg is showing respiratory alkalosis these are the common scenarios we come across in the early sepsis management sir this uh, most uh, common production of uh, lactate is respiratory muscle sir the production is very high your sir. patient is having a respiratory distress okay and his pco2 also is low so the production is uh, very high uh, from the respiratory muscles even though perfusion is normal uh, in this patient because of the respiratory distress this patient is having lactates there are also other causes of lactate also because as i uh, mentioned to you that uh, uh, do you think uh, it is uh, because of respiratory distress causing lactic uh, lactate high lactate 
ఇట్స్ <laughs> So, so my to, intention, uh, sorry, sir. Yeah, yeah. My intention and and tip, junior should not get misled with these things. There is a possibility elevated lactate and alkalosis can coexist with early sepsis. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that is one thing. Second thing is, if the anion gap is normal also, there is a DKA. Because in DKA, we have to consider original sodium adjusted to the glucose levels. That is point two. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, I think last one I forgot. So, next thing is AVG it should be uh, uh, given importance when the patient is like a very raw virgin, like, like no interventions has been taken on the patient, no NIV, no diuretic. That is the original AVG. If these interventions are done, there will be alterations which may not be seen as expected. These are the three things, take-home points I want to consider. Medication. Yes. You have to check always medication. medication and niv or in something yeah right sir sinwa sir mohan sir anything comments yes sir definitely sir we need to consider all that things and then evaluate it sir thank you thanks sir any questions sir mohan sir mohan sir name le sir nechukovali mohan ro ikkade unnadu idiga maatladandi sir ఇద్దరు కలిసి కంబైన్ క్వశ్చన్ వేస్తున్నారా కంబైన్ అట్ట కాదు ఒకరికి మంచిగానే పడుతుంది ఒకరికి వినపడట్లేదు రిఫ్లెక్ట్ గురించి ఏదో మాట్లాడుతా ఉన్నారు మోహన్ రావు గారు రిఫ్లెక్ట్ ఇదే మీటింగ్ లో మాట్లాడవచ్చు సార్ రిఫ్లెక్ట్ డేట్స్ ఆర్ ఫిక్స్డ్ ఐ రిక్వెస్ట్ ద టీమ్ ఆల్ సీనియర్స్ టు డిస్కస్ శ్రీనివాస్ అండ్ స్టార్ట్ డూయింగ్ ఇట్ and uh, release the brochure along with the speakers time is very less brochure release uh, can be decided by dr sinwas with all the topics and for both to- days sir topics uh, uh, topics i will uh, try to do it in the next 10 days and uh, mo- our uh, core team mohan sir mohan rao um david varlakshmi rani madam ఇలా రాణి మేడం ఈ రోజు మాట వినిపించలేదు నాకు నాకు సో రాణి మేడం ఆల్రెడీ అయితే కానీ సీన్ లో రాదు దేవుడు జోక్ గుర్తొస్తుంది నాకు ఏంటి అదే ఇలా అర్థమైంది నీ బతుకు బస్ స్టాండ్ అయ్యి సార్ మీరు ఎక్స్పర్ట్ ఒపీనియన్ 